Hey guys, welcome to the Awesome Cast, episode 93, right here in uh, studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm Mike Sork, your host as usual. With me on the couch, also as usual, is Chachi of InsertCoinToBegin.com. I gotta get used to saying that instead now. <laughs> but the, 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 yeah, the audio listeners didn't get this CU point. Hi. There you go. There you go. Also back joining us again is Brian Snyder at Davitech. He is also wary of Windows 8. I'm also wary of my internet connection tonight. So <laughs> We've been wow. having some See issues, yes. <laughs> uh, glad to finally have you on. And joining us in studios is... Get the right camera here. Ben Paul of communityteach.com. How you doing? Co-founder. Well. Mm-hmm. Thanks uh, for having me. Excellent. Excellent. Now, uh, let's get right into it. Community Teach. Uh, we, uh, I met you at, at the Open Coffee Club a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, and uh, so you, you, weren't, you weren't part of the cycle at Alpha Lab. That's Somebody right. said you need to talk to this guy. I think it was John Carmen introduced right, us. Right, right, right. He's been a part of Community Teach. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. so explain, explain the concept to everybody. So for any skill you want to learn, it finds someone in your community who will teach it to you for free. So if you want to learn how to cook or how to play the piano or how to play guitar, whatever it is, there's someone in your community who will teach that to you for free. And our website finds that person for you. So it's like uh, it, it, it's like like social bartering for skills and exactly and, and so not mm-hmm. labors per se right but it's more more teaching teaching too. and learning right Excellent. not like task grab it for doing things for other people yes yeah, so which, 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 which came to my mind as i was signing in i was like i remember this task rabbit thing yeah so uh well where did the idea come from um the idea came from let's see it was my co-founder sarah and um she would always fall asleep in the lounge at her college and she became friends with her housekeeper because her housekeeper um, of her dorm room would always wake her up and be like, Sarah, you know, what are you doing in your life? You need to get up. You need to go to class, you know, get off this couch. She'd be like, ah, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> they became friends and she wanted to do something to help, um, her housekeeper Wanda. So Sarah figured out that what she needed was tutoring for her daughter. Mm-hmm. So, um, Sarah actually started a whole tutoring program for, um, for college students to tutor, um, staff members' families at her school. And after graduating, she found out I did websites. We knew each other from grade schools. And of course, when you have an idea and you find out someone else does website, attack. So <laughs> she attacked me, and I thought it was a great idea, and I couldn't believe no one else had done it. So I so, agreed. So there's really not, there's nothing else along, along this lines out there? There's stuff that's similar. There's stuff where you can pay to do this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, there's stuff that's bartering for tasks, although it's not really popular. Like time banks have not gained widespread use. They, they uh, seem like they'd be a little more complicated than this. I'm not sure. Yeah, I haven't had experience yeah. or I haven't seen a time bank website that's really um, easy to use or anything. And then the other thing is there's free school, which is an anarchist concept that's around the nation. And um, so that's similar to community. Teach. Um, none of them have a very solid web presence mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. So how long did it take you guys to get uh, from, from concept to having something functional? Um, I'd say maybe um, a month or two. Okay. Yep. Well, that's a good turnaround. Yeah. Um, well, it was functional to us. <laughs> oh, functional. <laughs> enough, enough to show off, I guess. Yeah, enough to show off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> excellent. Excellent. I, yeah. I, I can't recall. Did you go through the Alpha Lab program? No, we got an interview, but uh, mm-hmm. we didn't make the cut. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you did you uh, go through any other any other incubators or anything around the around the area? Uh, no, no, nope. well, so it's completely <laughs> independent. That's great. That's great. That's that's one way to spin it. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so how was the process? I mean, we have a lot of uh, people, you know, with great ideas out there. I mean, it's great talking to people down at the Alpha Lab and running into guys like you. Um, you know, how, what was the process like? You know, building. Uh, well, how how big is the site these days? Uh, we have three thousand users. We've had over. Uh, 250 events in mm-hmm. five cities, um, and we've had hundreds of people share skills one-on-one, and thousands of people share skills within groups. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So, so is there any um, any 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 uh, uh, particular hur- hurdles that really kind of were <laughs> seemed daunting going into this? Um. I would say there are more hurdles that seem daunting now that we've actually done it than going into, <laughs> going into where we're just like, oh, everyone will teach each other. It'll be great. But um, 
there are some hurdles we've identified now mm-hmm. as to why, it, you know, it hasn't been picking up quite as much as, as we'd want, mm-hmm. even though we do have thousands of users. So Excellent. 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 Uh, so step me through this. I, I, I signed up with an account uh, uh, right before the show. Okay. Uh, here, we'll pull it up here. So so uh, yeah, step me through, like, what, what can I do with this website? What, you know, wh- where do I go from here? Um, All right. So if you want to learn guitar, which, as you can see, most people in Pittsburgh do, or the plurality of people in Pittsburgh do, then you you see there's already a class set up for you actually on guitar. Oh, yeah. yeah, so you can click there to learn one-on-one. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to show you all the people who can teach you guitar in Pittsburgh. Shit, you didn't put your location in, so never mind. Um, <laughs> but now that's anyone who can teach you guitar in the U.S. Um, I, I might be willing to travel. Okay, okay. <laughs> And then back on your homepage, you can see all the group classes, which we call Learn It's. Mm-hmm. So this up here? Yeah, that'll work too. And, and there's there's all kinds of, like, uh, I see a lot of yoga, gardening, uh, traveling cheaply, apparently. Yeah, that's very uh, popular. People want to learn how to travel cooking. cheaply. Yeah. So excellent, excellent. Um, and, and I know, like, like uh, uh, John Carmen was saying, he's used this before. Yeah, he he used this to teach people how to do social media, mm-hmm. um, which I hope was helpful in, in him getting uh, some more clients as well. Mm-hmm. Um, he's used this for a few other one on ones. I don't remember, but also in a group class, I taught how to get a meeting with anyone. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, how to contact anyone you want to meet with, write them an awesome email, call them whatever it takes and to get a meeting with anyone. And he showed up there and had a good time there. So this is, um, I mean, this, this seems like a great alternative to like, you know, usually if I wanted to, you know, learn, learn guitar, learn some of these skills like this, maybe you go to the, like the community and see if they're doing anything like the libraries are doing a lot of stuff with computer and, and other classes, yeah. but, but this is nice. But the, the, a, lot of, a lot of times those classes are intimidating. Mm. I think to a lot of people. Uh, I, I think I'm kind of seeing that a little bit with the, I'm, I'm teaching some social media stuff okay. over at the, li- at the main branch library in town. Um, and, and it seems that way. I mean, there's only like maybe five or six people stop by and everything. Okay. Um, so then this is basically aimed at one on one, right? So, we have the one on ones and the groups. OK, so both are. So so the groups are am I thinking like a, a teaching meetup kind of thing. Yeah, it's like a teaching meetup. Excellent. Or like a one on one skill swap, you could call it. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Cool. Cool. And you said that this is all over the country now. Um, well, I say all over the country, and by that I mean... <laughs> what are the hotspots? You know, the hotspots are where my co-founder and I are, in okay. Pittsburgh and in Chicago. Um, and then we have ambassadors in other cities who are trying to bring it off the ground there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So uh, so, so, what's next for Community Teach? I, I see this little tab here. Uh, yeah, that's what's next. Wow, that's pretty <laughs> intrusive there. Um, <laughs> well, it's a low resolution monitor. I'm sure it's it's not. Oh yeah, I'm sure it's not the yeah, website. Yeah, I, I knocked it down for the uh, the yeah. screen here. So, uh, so so what what is this I'm looking at? Yeah, so that's uh, for a corporations for um, for companies who want to get their employees more connected with one another, um, to have them informally exchanging skills uh, on a 24 seven basis. Basically, um, you just sign up your company and you pay us, and we help your employees exchange skills with one another. Excellent. So this is more for larger scale companies like Yeah, at least a uh, hundred or so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like I, I see this like um like like uh I read the uh the, the Zappos book and how yeah. they uh promoted everybody needs to be learning something. So this is kinda like for that kind of community culture to kind of help that along. Yeah, yeah. I mean it's basically if you you don't need to go through the whole process of making curricula and um kind of making a really formal training program you can just have your just click and have your employees teaching each other so Mm -hmm. excellent excellent so um excellent so uh is this is this your first your first company you were involved with yeah yeah okay excellent what 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 your background's programming well i actually went to school in psychology i just kind of (laughs) picked up programming i I did websites on the side uh Mm -hmm. when i was in undergrad um i just made it for random people who wanted them and uh yeah excellent excellent brian now i know we got you are you still here there you are uh, yeah, you, have any, you have any questions for our guest here <laughs> no i i think that's great i think uh you know the opportunity especially for a large corporation i've, I've worked in a fairly large corporation where you're kind of dispersed from your co-workers and just knowing you know you know what do they know or what yeah, can exactly. i learn, learn mm-hmm. from them i think is is fantastic 
Awesome. That's yeah. it. I'm more of a small time, small, small company guy myself usually. So, uh, so that, that's great. That's great to see, see something like that out there. So communityteach.com. That's right. Go sign up for it. Go learn some stuff. That's so, right. You hang out with us and uh, talk some news then. Yeah. Sounds good. Awesome. Let's get right. Thanks into for having me. Yeah. No problem. No problem. Um, well, the big news this week was the iPad. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and, and I don't know, am I the only one that, that, that followed the live blogs? Yep. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have Rob here. He's usually my, my Apple buddy. Uh, so it's a resolutionary, according to Apple. We'll bring it up here. Uh, pretty much, it, it, we, we discussed last week. Other than the Hold one, on. What's that? Did you say resolutionary? That's what it says right I there on the screen. I did not realize that either. Oh. Resolutionary. Oh. I did not see that us. Isn't that the best thing <laughs> why is apple allowed to, allowed to make up words i i don't know i you know now you get into the you know if i did that i would get 600 tweets telling me that that's not a word and that i need to correct my language well, it, well everything was uh before with apple was what it was like uh insanely insanely great and stuff like that they just kind of made up terms as it is so but this one, it's going to have LTE on Verizon and uh, AT&T. Uh, apparently not going to lose much battery life for it. Uh, they got the Retina display, which as they said, <laughs> this was great. They were showing off the Retina display. And basically they said that the resolution on this thing is greater than the resolution of the giant screen behind them. Or your TV in your 1080p TV in your living room. So uh, actually a decent, looks like iSight, they call it an iSight camera now, which is kind of weird. Uh, five megapixels on the back. I don't know what the front one is. Um, they unveiled uh, iPhoto updates to iMovie, uh, GarageBand. Apparently, you can play together on GarageBand now. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that that'd be interesting. Uh, hey, we're, we've already seen like iPad uh, bands around and symphonies <laughs> and stuff like that out. So that's just going to make everybody want to do something like that. Um, so what do you what do you guys think of this? So it's quad core. It's uh, the same price. The iPad two is going to be uh, start at four hundred dollars. Like we were talking with Chachi, Chachi was saying, you know, there's word out that uh, you know you can get the first one for a hundred dollars some places. Uh, so what do you guys think of this? It was a, a, a Twitter comment. Was it a Twitter comment? Yeah, it's in the notes. You put it there. Oh, <laughs> I don't have the notes though. Yeah, you said. Uh... At Douglas Derda said that a uh, wife was in Verizon store this week, and salesman said iPad ones are dropping to a hundred dollars. I'm surprised they still have those, to be honest, because I, I thought they they got uh, put out of the chain a while ago. Um, another one, Chilla put out uh, his new iPad was shipped and coming from Milltown, PA. This is like three days ago, and he was wondering if it had come early. Uh, it, it sounds like a lot of people are seeing their UPSs, uh, uh, you know. Showing showing up their package uh, within the state at least, so I don't know. Maybe they do some kind of timed drop off or something like that uh, with these. But um, also interesting, the their their site was devastated after the announcement, like worse than I think I'd ever seen it uh, with people trying to order. They were like mm. they're like four oh fours. Like you don't see that you don't see that with the Apple website, you know. So <laughs> are you an Apple are you an Apple fanboy as well? I like the yeah. iPhone, like the or iPhone. at least I did before I heard the This American Life about where it comes from. Yeah, 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I don't, I don't, I don't know how you think that's a, a turn a lot of people's opinion towards stuff like this. Like, I think people are still going to buy these things. People, I, I haven't heard that it's affect people's buying. No, people, I mean, no, people, it, I it doesn't matter how it's made. No, seriously. Americans, uh, we as Americans don't give a crap on how it's made <laughs> or where it comes from. Long if it's good, we're going to buy it. If it's popular, we're going to buy long, it. As long as it's cheap and in Walmart, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've been we've been seeing this with tennis shoes for how long. I don't think there's going to be much difference. I mean, the only reason it is a big deal because it's Apple and it's hit the news, you know. I mean, there's no cell phone that doesn't come from a place like this, you know, at this point. Except for Nokia, because they're like Swedish or something. So, but... um. But there you go, new iPad. Anybody, Brian? Are you getting one? Uh, I will not be getting one. But what is with the name? <laughs> it's new. The name. It's the new one. 
No, it's stupid because you know what I've heard it called so far? Huh. The iPad 3, the iPad 2012. People are making up names for this thing. Why couldn't they just give it a name? Oh, by the way, here's our kid. I'm not going to name it. You go ahead and feel free to give it a name. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't notice that. You're right. It does not say iPad 3. Yeah, it's, it, just... it's the new iPad. Well, what's the next one going to be? The old one? Well, the I left think... one? The right one? <laughs> like. It's so dumb. I mean, the technology aside, I mean, obviously they made some improvements, which, uh, you know, I'm sure there are people that will take advantage of it and uh, there will be future software releases that will, you know, be able to take, you know, the quad core and the resolution. And uh, there there definitely will be a group of people that, um, you know, will, will want the technology, but it just it fielding questions all the time. Are you going to get the new iPad? Uh, which one? Oh, uh, I'm going to get this one. That, that, so. that was the thought that the confusion in the store is going to be you see the iPad 2 and then you're going to see the iPad or the new <laughs> iPad in the store. It's like, I want which one do you want? It was like, well, is this one the sequel or or what? Uh, it's going to I mean, I think it's pretty obvious they're trying to turn to a, a you know, kind of like the iPod touch. The iPod has always been first generation, second generation kind of underneath the I mean, there's usually not more than one or two models released at a time. So, and apparently they play it all over the world according to this commercial. Um, but yeah, I think we're just going to go to you get the newest one that's out there, and people don't really talk about what it is. You well, know? it's it's like a band putting out a self titled album after they've already had like seven albums. <laughs> exactly. No, but it, it seems it is, to work, it right? It brings it a amount of gravitas or something to it. I don't know what it does. No, it's not the same as that <laughs> because that would be. That would be iPad or Apple putting out or calling leaving this as just iPad. iPad right, right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's true. Well, it's always, but anywhere you see it, it's always like in 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 quotes the new iPad. I want the next like, iPhone to be called iPhone. Then I'll buy it. That sounds cool. You'll be down with that. Just call it iPhone. You know, <laughs> only the first one was, um, and even that's been recall, referred to as the Edge one since. Um, but yeah, it, or it's just iPad, or it's just resolutionary are we excited about the the screen i nope. mean <laughs> nope not chachi's not excited about the screen what what will get you excited about this ipad uh, about anything <laughs> uh, not apple <laughs> no seriously uh, uh, and this is a discussion that we go into all the time on the show but it's a status symbol mm -hmm. that's all it is nowadays Mm -hmm. It's a status symbol. And while their tablets are better than any of the alternatives, that doesn't necessarily mean that their computers are. Mm -hmm. People are buying their computer equipment because of the light-up shiny Apple on the back. I, I Well, do you think a lot of people are? Because that's not why I buy them. Like, you, you think the general populace, that's why they buy them. Not... I work with attorneys, sir. Oh, the attorneys are probably <laughs> buying them because of that reason, yes. Yeah. I mean, There's I... absolutely no reason... For an attorney in my firm to be buying an Apple computer when they're not doing video, they're not doing audio, they're not graphically designing crap. Okay. They're doing word processing. You don't think this is fine for, what, what do they got, like MacBook Airs or something? That is a status symbol. No, I'm talking full on MacBook Pros. Oh, wow. Uh, bigger Macs than you have mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it's the best out there. Oh, yeah. Meanwhile, so, they can't connect to Citrix unless I fix it for them. So this is so this is the Ferrari of uh, computers I right guess. now. <laughs> so, um, and I don't see I don't I, I saw the iPad one. I, I don't see much. Well, I see reason to upgrade, but not enough that I can pull out five hundred dollars out of my butt to pay for it. You know, I mean, I, I don't see anything. I mean, we're we're used. You know, Chachi, you know, we use mine in production all the time. We use it as a teleprompter. I know. I use it for notes during during. Uh, Listen, DVD I will shoots. openly admit that the iPad is the best tablet device out. Yeah, yeah, but I don't see a reason to drop another five hundred dollars less than two years later. Nope. For this, it would be nice to have a camera on it. That I mean, not even just to take pictures, because if you as I've said in the past on here, seeing people take pictures with a tablet is weird. It is awkward. Sorry, wheels, if you're in the chat room, but it looks weird. He's got a Galaxy Tab uh, or a Galaxy 10.1, and yes, there he is talking about his Galaxy 10.1. Um, <laughs> hey, I get to play draw something with with him on his Galaxy, so that's fine. Uh, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, well, hey, Mike, I have a question. As someone sure 
uh, price aside, so if you were going to get one, just say for free for what you do. Yes, I get it. Yes, I get it. And, <laughs> yes, I get it. Because, uh, but could you use it though? I guess with the quad core, the resolution. I think that's really what it comes down to. You uh, know, for someone, you know, it's not going to matter to myself yeah. or somebody else who doesn't do that kind of stuff. But for you, would you be able, would you be able to use this device? Uh, it's, it's definitely. I could always use more horsepower when it comes to doing video projects. Um, I would love to have iMovie like they have on there. I, I can't get it on the iPad One. I, I would love that ability to like shoot a quick video or transfer it over. And you know, I, after I you know awkwardly filmed it with a tablet, of course. Uh, but the ability to do that and and you know just edit it and pop it up, like I would love to take an iPad and my iPhone and go to the Comic Con, do the do the interviews, you know, with the game developers and the comic book guys like we did last year, and be uploading it from there of course i'm not doing that at the convention center because we know how services at a convention center at a place like that horrible <laughs> the javis and i'm pretty sure the javis center is like covered in tinfoil at that point um is it's ridiculous why do they put the press room in the basement where there's absolutely no reception i don't get that well you, you, you were there for that i barely got anything i had at&t out of rise in my my five spot nothing yeah nothing at all and, yeah, yeah, it's just, kind just, of hard having a, a text conversation and saying, oh, I'm going to have to respond to you in an hour after my phone charges because I have to get down to the basement to charge it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, but I guess that's how they sell Internet for like $30 a day down there. Yeah, so, screw that. Yeah. Uh, well, that's why you have a MiFi that we couldn't use in the basement. Exactly. Exactly. They know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. Um Moving on, I mentioned draw something. Chachi, you've been addicted to it for the last couple of days. Um, I, I, you know how I found out about it. Uh, our friends Mikey and Big Bob were on Twitter talking about drawing penises and poop on it, and that, hey, no, I'm like I need to check is, this out. Okay, penis is not, but poop is a legitimate word like on word on there <laughs> that they ask you to draw. So explain draw something to the people that maybe have the the uh, the. Uh, uh, the rest of the people that aren't amongst the five million that have already played it's uh, it's Pictionary. Basically, um, yeah. It, they, at the beginning of each game, they give you three words: uh, a one point, a two point, and a three point word. Uh, one being the easiest, three points being the hardest, and you are to draw uh, the word you pick. And then the person playing with you will look at it and guess what it is. And that's it. And it's back and forth. Yeah, that's basically it. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, and the game goes on for as long as you both can guess what the other person is drawing. That there's no winning or anything. No, I, I have I have one game that's up to sixty seven turns, <laughs> and, I have, and I have another game that's up Wait, to fifty four. Wait, you started Saturday. I know. <laughs> so, so is it one of those things where you you can't understand it unless you play it? Because I don't understand how that would be addictive. But it, it must it's, be. It's the drawing. It, like, it, it's so hard to draw on here. Oh, okay. It, it, <laughs> it makes it difficult. But you can use it on an iPad, yeah. which makes it a little bit easier. Okay. Like, I'm addic I, Like I'm playing with some people who are amazingly good at drawing <laughs> using uh, small devices. <laughs> no, I'm not I'm even... I'm playing with, uh, with, with Dan from the comic book pit. It's, it's, it's another world playing with a comic book guy, because he has a little more of a mind for it. Hold on. I, uh, let me... Let me make a turn, and I'll see if I can. Uh, uh, Chris is amazing <laughs> at drawing when she wants to be mm -hmm. on here. Like mm -hmm. what, if she and it's it's great when she writes Korean. She <laughs> she hasn't done that to me She's yet. Done that to me because she wrote the she made the flag, and I was trying to figure out what Pepsi had to do with whatever <laughs> she was drawing, and then she wrote some sort of Asian language underneath <laughs> it. I'm like, oh, Korea. That's how it works. Well, all right. Number one, she works for the World Affairs Council. Yes, I mean she knows Korean. So, no, and, and and number two, like here, this is my horribly bad drawing. The word is nail. Okay. <laughs> oh, so, I thought it was poop or penis no. based on that drawing. <laughs> so that is my nail. Hold it up. I don't it looks like really... poop and a penis. <laughs> you should you should show that. It's pretty amazing. So I, I horribly wrote hammer to point to the hammer. You need Wait, to show the poop penis I, nail. There. 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 <laughs> so, yeah, the one on uh, your right, if you're looking at the screen. It's poop penis wow. now. So That's... I had to label that the one was a hammer. And there's no restrictions. They don't tell you not to do words. No. I actually had somebody just write the but word I mean... and gave up. 
So it's, so people can be completely gaming the system. It's like it, it's the same as Words with Friends, where it's, you got the free ad version. There's mm -hmm. ninety nine cents to get the ad free version. And you get some more colors. Well, right, let, let's see what she drew. Then <laughs> you can pay to cheat as well. Let's see what she. And the cool thing is, it shows you drawing it. Yeah, it, it, as you go, like as the person makes a stroke on the. <laughs> They're calling for Chachi plays a marathon of draw something. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe you'll get to uh, that forty-eight okay. hours with that. Um, I can tell already that this one is going to be Lady Gaga. Is that like every other word or something? No, no. I just <laughs> did I can draw, tell. Did they draw a lady with a penis? No. Here, right, right. <laughs> yeah, show the camera. So you can't. You can't show really, everybody. Okay, you so you really see the tell. glasses. You see. Yeah. Okay. All you right. can't really tell, but I, I, surprisingly, and she, 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 as you can tell, she's going into the detail of drawing a ridiculous hat of some sort. <laughs> yeah. See. And, it, and it's a little bit of everything. I mean, they're like M and M's come up in this thing. I mean, it, it's a uh, it, it's a nice variety of words they got going on there. Hopefully, they update it because I feel like I feel like I'm seeing a lot of repeats already. And I've I started Thursday, so I, I just wonder if it's going to be like a sh not much of a long tail on this thing. And you can and they have they have micro transactions. You can buy more colors, more, mm. more these. There's these bombs that'll delete half the letters and leave at least the ones that go into the word. So I mean, because it really limits how many letters are available to you. So that helps deciding on it. Are you on this, Brian? I am. Uh, I have limited the scope as to who I play so that I don't start like a million games. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That it. was like the words with friends problem with me. Oh, God. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I play with uh, my wife and my mother. So and it's like the two only people that uh, we send drawings back and forth. So so you're, you're using the path rule, it sounds like the uh, if I wouldn't invite them to a dinner party, I'm not going to draw with them. Uh, not so much. No, I just because, uh, don't have a lot of time to yeah, no, uh, that, be screwing around with it and keep the number of people to a minimum. That role doesn't apply because you and I both would be invited to a dinner party if he was throwing one. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, but he won't draw with me, right. so I, I see how this goes. Yeah, he'll, he'll, I, see, I see where I am in his life. He'll cook us so, dinner and no. get us drunk, but he won't draw us pictures. <laughs> Your time is too valuable for me to be uh, wasting your time with these crappy pictures that I'm drawing. Did you not see Have the? You seen uh, ours? Did you not see the penis and poop that I drew? And now, <laughs> mine's sad because I went to an art school. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, Sonic says in the chat, "Not the size of the device; it's how you draw with it." <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I well, anyways, there are there are. Uh, 20 million downloads of this thing. Well, probably 10 million people because everybody got the ad version, then bought the 99 cent version. Uh, in just five weeks, this has came out. The first I heard of this was last Thursday with the penis and poop tweets. So, yeah, it's it's uh, it's been getting out there. It's amazing how simple they can make an app and still make it addictive and really popular. You it know? is. It is. I, and there's even been problems with it. Like uh, AJ, who's been on the show a few times, he was complaining last few days about how he has to kill the app completely in order to see updated games like that somebody has played on the other end which i haven't, I haven't been seeing this problem but uh <laughs> what <laughs> uh, the easy word this time is p and not the the vegetable but p e e p wow so it's like they know it's like the developers know where these these pictures could go and they say, Meh. hey, you watch, there's going to be like an 18, like, are you 18 warning when with uh, when you download this in the near future after this? It's like the chat roulette of Pictionary. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. Oh, man. I mean, the best was when, when Mike, this is this is what got me into, like, I have to see what this thing's about. Because he actually warned, because, I mean, you know, Mike is on, you know, morning drive time. So he has like a wave of different demographics so says, no don't follow me if you don't want to see badly drawn penises so wow oh wait does it automatically tweet everything you draw or something no no no, no. he was no. just talking about it because right. i think they had just discovered it so yeah he, just like, he was warning everyone that sent him an invite to play the game that because kids listen to their show yeah <laughs> so they don't want to drop them in on on the penis party um but 20 million dollars that's crazy uh, and I'm sure they're doing great for it. Um. <laughs> That's just my, what if there's an app that can automatically tweet everything I do? Like everything you do? I'll bet people would do that. 
I'll let I, people sign up. I already I need, do that. Yeah, don't we? We all, we all manually do that. <laughs> right, so. automatically, I'm just saying. I, I, like, I just went to the bathroom. Like, look out of the camera of your phone. It'll decode it for you and tell everyone what you do. Oh, so the thing that supposedly the government's already doing, we just make that public for the rest of people us. People would love it. There I don't go. know why, I, I but people would love will. it. I think some people will. Because, I mean, remember the whole, like, Justin TV, I, Justine, camera on the hat thing? Like, I think a lot of people... Like, I don't know if people realize that they can do this. I mean, there well, are well obviously, I know what you're referring to, but just for the sake of those other people out there. I mean, just don't. basically, like, the life casting. The, the camera walking around, everything that you do is broadcast on the internet. Okay, we kind of have that in Twitter, I guess. But I guess that's what it did. It made it accessible for everybody down to, like, the text message. Uh, and, and now there's no need to just carry a camera with you, even though we have, all have them now with our, with our phones. So, um... Hey, Chachi, here's a couple for you. Uh, current gen gaming consoles in over half of U.S. homes, digital purchases on the rise. Does this go along with your thing with the uh, uh, console gaming's dead? Uh, it wasn't my thing. It was. Oh, you were reading one before the show. Yeah, I was reading an article that said console gaming is dead. So over 50% of homes have a, have a, have a console. Of course. That seems to make sense. This generation. Yeah. So is that because of the length, you think? Of the, of the cycle? I mean, these have been around since, what, 2004? No, it's the quality of the games. Yeah. No one... It, it's not... Because, I mean, if you think about it, uh, the Nintendo cycle lasted a pretty long time. All right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So... The original one. Yeah, and, the original. And even the Super Nintendo. Yeah. And yeah. then even Nintendo 64. Now, Wii's lasting a pretty long time, but we're on... We're on the third version of PlayStation. We're on the second version of Xbox. Mm -hmm. And now it's to the point where, I mean, the next console isn't going to be out for another two, two to four years. And, and I'm sure this includes all of the all of the order grandmas and stuff with the Wii's that everybody's forgotten about. They're collecting dust. Right. It's still technically current generation. No, it is. It is current generation, considering that the Wii U isn't coming out until later. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So I mean, until until the next device in the series comes out, we're in the current generation. Like these companies are just now talking. Like the ones that matter. Um, I'm so, sorry. And plus, and plus, everybody's making money because uh, they've you know, they've made their money back from making these consoles, the right. R and D and everything, because they always sell them at a loss right off the bat. Yep. So, so. I, it takes eight months for Microsoft to make a profit on an Xbox. Mm -hmm. So, so I nobody mean, wants the new cycle. Nobody wants a shortened cycle yeah. at this point. No, it, they can't afford it at this point. And none of us want it because there's a recession going on, guys. You know, <laughs> none of us wants to buy new, new fancy Mario games. But know? um, yeah, the Wii U is not coming out for a while yet. Mm -hmm. So until that does, the next generation hasn't started. What about uh, since you're a resident game guy? Insert coin begin dot com. Just try it out there. Mm -hmm. Um. Have you heard these rumors that the... Uh, actually, I think you guys posted this the other day, that there's not going to be a disk drive in the new new Xbox? Yeah, we did post that. Um, I knew I read it somewhere. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Bobby sent that to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, Bobby did send it to me. Uh, yeah, it's all cloud. All cloud? Mm-hmm. That's awesome. I, I, I mean, they've I already taken cool. they've already taken steps towards that because yeah. they don't send... Uh, they don't put instruction manuals in the cases anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are all online. You I get, still can't figure out how to do a ladder match in WWE 12, by the way, because of that. I haven't looked, I haven't looked it up. <laughs> I don't think I had to. No? I think you're just slow. <sighs> no, it, I, I believe it's in the book. Maybe. It's the same way that they've done ladder matches uh, since... Xbox 360. Anyways, back to um, the delivery yeah. system. <laughs> um, yeah, it'll well, be... The biggest complaint I'm hearing, and I can't believe this has come around, Everybody, everybody's mad because their games aren't going to be compatible with the new one. The other disc games that they're bought already. I, you know what? I mean, I, I, you know, considering how haphazard the last generation was with that, mm -hmm. and considering this last generation or two it takes were the a hard only drive. ones that let us do that... It takes a hard drive. Yeah. That's your that's, that's your media at this point. Right. It takes a hard drive for you to be able to play last generation's games. Hopefully they'll be able to let me play like my arcade games I've downloaded. It uh, it would I, make I, sense. I don't see why how that would change. Yeah. Yeah. Um if because even now uh, they've already taken I mean as far as cloud 
uh, purchasing and storage goes, they've already taken the steps towards that. Because you can go into Xbox Live Arcade and buy full versions of games. Yeah, yeah. I, I bought Portal. Um, you can buy Portal 2 in there. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's all of these games that you can go in and buy and never leave the comfort of your couch. It's kind of nice. Uh, we're way, you know, is Microsoft ready, though, for that one day where that, you know, the next portal comes out, the next Modern Warfare, and it's all over their server? Because I don't think they, they don't have day and date. No. It's usually like months later. No, if they ever do that. They no. So they're not ready for that. No, not at all. That's I mean, why it's going to be Steam, years. Steam still has problems with that. It's going to be at least, I mean, everything, they're, they're just now getting together to talk about the next Xbox. Mm-hmm. I mean,. This was a preliminary meeting that they had that all of these gaming sites are basing their predictions off of or their rumors. Mm-hmm. This was a preliminary meeting. This is Microsoft flying a few of their vendors out to mm-hmm. sit down and say, Hey, by the way, this is kind of an idea of what's coming yeah, up. Yeah, what can we do this? Yeah, yeah. Well, well like, that's what Microsoft is doing at this point. Yeah, yeah. They're meeting with everyone. They're like, this is what we want to do. Is that possible? Mm-hmm. Well, you guys fly with us. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, we're already seeing. I mean, we're can already you seeing, make this happen? We're already seeing uh, Electronic Arts having issues with Steam and spinning off their own origin system. We had rumors last week about Steam doing their own console. Maybe. Steam will do their own console if they have to. If they have to. If they have to. Uh, Gabe's already said that they're not at the point where they need to do their own console yet. uh, Gabe Newell? Yeah. Yeah. He's a half owner of it. Who recently we discovered is a billionaire. Steam is worth $3 billion. Wow. He owns exactly half of the company. Nice. So he's. It's a platform. I know the number that the number that Steam has. Penny Arcade is where this all started from. Exactly. Exactly. And he's worth one point five billion dollars. Yeah. Um, what? A... <laughs> Anyhow, change. What do you What do you think about this, Brian? Uh, do, do, do you like the idea of all your gaming being in the cloud next generation? Absolutely not. Uh, you know, for, for a few reasons. One, there's got to be some sort of delivery mechanism, you know, for a local media or something because think they're going to lose the impulsive buyer if they don't. If I can't, you know, if somebody can't go to wherever they go to buy their games, they're going to be missing out on all of those people. Now, whether or not it's a DV drive versus, you know, everybody starts getting USB drives or something to that effect. Uh, you know, if you do everything, you know, online, you're not going to have all those people that, oh, hey, I'm at Walmart and decide to pick up Call of Duty. I mean, right there is a missed sale. And I would imagine that, you know, although it may not happen with the high price games all the time, I'm sure there's a number of things, you know, all the bargain bins go away, um, you know, things like that go away. I, I think when you have to rely, especially on online services i mean oh i can't play my game because the psn network went down or something or yeah, whatever yeah, and we're which all. happens for 14 hours the right the so i think ago. you know that it, I, I like the idea of making sure that your games are available to you and portions of your game are available to you you know maybe wherever you go whether it's a friend's house or you know whatever whatever that situation is but um like i said i don't, I don't think that they can totally get away from that i mean people get impatient enough just waiting the first time you put a game in and waiting for it to start or update software or whatever Mm -hmm. imagine if they had to wait like 10 hours 12 hours to actually download the game that's true and and and, uh you also think about it 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 completely cuts out people in rural areas that that play video games I mean, I mean, you know, I, I, there's places in Pennsylvania I know that do not have that great of internet. If these, I mean, even down to like you're doing satellite, and it's like I just blew my entire. It, worst case, you have a satellite dish because you're that out of touch of internet of being able to get it. <laughs> Those things start off at about a 250 megabyte for 24 hours limit. You've been looking into one. Um, what happens when you want to download the new Grand Theft Auto? Which is gigs at least you know what they want what they should do and it would probably actually work out better for them in the long run 
but they need to switch to SD cards. And I think that's an option. I really think that is. I think that solves your Walmart problem. Uh, other than that, I, I see them just, you, you're just going to see a giant rack of giant cards with a little code on it. And that's what you have in the cases there that are worth the $50, $60 at Walmart. <laughs> that's what ends up dropping into the bargain bin is a bunch of these little cards or maybe the SD cards. Either way, it, it's going to be DRM to all hell. It's going to solve the issue that the publishers have with the used video games. And and everybody's putting the screws to GameStop at this point. They're cutting, the, they're cutting them out of the middle. So I don't know. I think SD cards is the way to go. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty, basically what the DS does. Because uh, not only does it, it, it decreases packaging cost. Mm -hmm. No moving parts. No moving parts. And how often have you lost an SD card? <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's not micro SD. You know, exactly. Oh lost some of those. Oh seriously, how, yeah, how seriously. often have you lost an SD card? Yeah, yeah. I, so either people are I, I specifically apart. stay away from SD cards because of that fact. Right. And only recently because like that one thing for the DS you gave me and yeah. uh, and, and and an old Windows 5 phone that we had. Do we have mini SD cards? Uh, so, yeah, that's I don't I don't even want to bother with that. So I don't know much about video games. Can you tell me something that I should say? Like, give me a witty comment to say. Uh, about this say, conversation just say that's bull i'm going to keep playing mario and that is bull i'm going to keep playing mario and world track me that is a good game world track me there you go you got some credit on that one <laughs> <laughs> world track me man now now when you played the power pad or wait was that the, that was a power pad. yeah that was yeah, yeah. Power yeah. Power now pad. did you play it normal or did you just use your hands i, I used my heels you used your heels my heels because that makes you press harder and it registers <laughs> yeah i mean did anyone actually run on that thing <laughs> or jump <laughs> yeah, you did, jump off did, the pad did and we back keep out. it honest with the power pad just like did we keep it honest <laughs> when we're just sitting on the couch playing wii tennis uh, it, it's the same thing it's the same thing i mean we're, the day we figure out wait we just need to i, I learned the hard way that uh Sitting down to play Wii Golf mm. with small dogs is a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Uh, Multiple small dogs, not just one. Well, it, 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 unfortunately, it was my dog that I hit because we have we have a few dogs, um, but uh, I caught him on the backswing because I didn't realize <laughs> oh, he was there. Oh, so I had to stop playing oh, and make sure he was all right. But he was he was he's fine. Oh. He got a treat out of the deal. He sat on my lap and we played golf. Was... I mean, just the implication was bad enough, but then yeah. you have to spell it out. Oh, I'm going to be uh, traumatized with it. <laughs> uh, another company that is known for video games we talked about a few weeks ago. I've actually been using this for some work stuff. Uh, we talked about online desktop. I don't know, Brian, you were here when we talked about it the first time. Um, basically, if you haven't heard, they're basically virtualizing Windows, Office, Internet Explorer if you pay for it. Um, off on a server somewhere in the cloud, it's streamed. Basically, the video of it is streamed to your iPad, piece by piece, and uh, and and it works pretty good. I work on the Mac a lot, and then people send me these docx files from Word two thousand three that I can't use on the Mac anywhere. Mm. Um, even if you, I think even if you have a version of Office, it doesn't work very good. Mm. Um, so I just uploaded this on the free on live desktop and converted it in a full version of Office twenty ten. It's it's pretty cool. It downloads it. You can throw oh, like five cool. files on there. Well, um, it looks like it looks like they might not uh, entirely be making legal use of Office and Windows Seven uh, in this in this cloud service. Uh, they, this is actually on a blog um, where the corporate VP of licensing, Joe Matz, with Microsoft. Uh, <laughs> hold on, I moved the thing. Um, he explicitly called the online situation an issue that needs to be resolved and said Microsoft is actively engaged with OnLive with the hope of bringing them into a proper license scenario. Uh, Brian, you, Brian and Chachi, actually, you, you, you guys deal with Microsoft licenses a bit. Do you, do you have uh, any input on, on what might have happened here? I yeah. missed what you said. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> Brian? I think we were talking about World, world Track. Absolutely. Me, actually. Uh, actually, this is, uh, I would say, one of the 
core things that uh, yeah, I kind of do during my day job. So there are a lot of uh, places that uh, want to make their desktops or applications uh, visible to their end users who may be wherever they are. And essentially, they, you know, as Chachi had mentioned earlier, they, they typically utilize Citrix for, for those sort of things. So I can tell you that the licensing can become extremely complex, uh, especially for applications and depending upon what delivery system that they're using to uh, push all of this out. Uh, a lot of times it actually you have to buy licenses from the vendor that you're using to run, for example, your virtual desktops, and then you have to pay for the licenses on top of the virtual desktops. And and then if you're using Office, and then, you know, it just, it goes on and on and on. Um, so essentially what was most likely or probably happening is, uh, thinking of it this way, they were probably running many, many copies of Office or Windows off of maybe a couple CD keys or, you know, a couple of known licenses. Uh, there are ways to, how should I say, l minimize the licensing impact, but it's mm. it's not cheap. Well, consider I, I'm wondering because I, I think it was it was a uh, guess that do they need a license for each person, not each instance, each person? Like I signed in and I have my account. Do I then have a license somewhere on at OnLive attached to me at that point? Again, everybody's mileage is going to vary. It's going to be different if you're an educational institution versus a corporate. Um, there, Microsoft has so many SKUs of licensing, uh, especially volume licensing. Mm. Uh, so it, it really does depend. But typically, under let's just say under a normal circumstance, uh, you, as you run that desktop, are going to have a license. You will have let's just say a pool of a hundred licenses and you know, that's how many users you can kind of have on the system. Okay. Uh, that's one way to set it up. And uh, again, you could also just pay for one license and allow a thousand users onto the system. Um, you know, depending upon, again, with volume licensing, you could, again, being able to install something and being able to, execute or run something is different than being licensed to actually use it. Okay. Hmm. Well, either way, it looks like, uh, it looks like they're, they're touch they're, they're in conversations. I don't, it's a really cool app. Uh, it, it, it adds a bit of functionality to even my first gen iPad. Uh, so, I mean, I, I, and they were looking at doing it on, on Macintosh. They were looking to do it on other tab. I think it's already on other Android tablets. Uh, so, hey, Wheels, confirm that for me, huh? Um, on your Galaxy there. And uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's a really cool use, and I hope they get it worked out here. And not too, Well, they got a lot of money sunk in on live to begin with, so I'm sure they can they can afford this uh, at any rate. I, I, I don't know if we talked about it here. Have you seen, seen the part where you can, if you pay $10 a month, mm -hmm. you get Internet Explorer, and you could watch Hulu full audio over this service? Oh, that's pretty cool. Because you get a browser that supports Flash, supports anything that Internet Explorer does. Mm. When you when you get to that five ten dollar mark with uh, the online desktop, they actually allow you to install applications. And and so, what's the argument that this is legal? <laughs> what is the <that> argument? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess they've done some sort of licensing somewhere along the line, and Microsoft's come out apparently on a blog, not like a statement, anything like that. This is on Microsoft's blog. That they they're like yeah OnLive might want to talk to us a little bit stronger about how they're using their licenses over there. So I guess there's some loophole with some these like Brian said with these these multiple SKUs mm -hmm. maybe they're using it in an inappropriate way. They must way. be using it in I an mean, inappropriate way. I can't imagine how this could be an appropriate way. Like, <laughs> this is... Well, actually, there there are many. Uh, legal ways to do it. I'm sure that uh, Chachi's law firm uses it. I know a lot of large educational corporations uh, within Pittsburgh use it. Uh, a lot of the corporations and you know institutions will want the my application anywhere on any device. Uh, really that if you look at a company like Citrix, Citrix uh, provides on pretty much every device uh, something that's called the Citrix receiver and you can use it on an iPhone, an iPad, uh, Android, uh, pretty much m most devices will have some sort of a, uh, what's called the Citrix receiver. 
from there, I can, you know, if I'm part of a company, I can actually log on, go to a website, right. securely log on and run a desktop, run an application. It may just be Internet Explorer. Uh, maybe that's all I need to, you know, look at. Um, but the nice thing about that is depending upon what type of institution you are, you have the ability to secure that. Uh, that, you know, it. You don't have to worry about somebody um, doing something horrible because once they're actually in your network running their desktop or your application, uh, the security that you've put in place, for example, inside your office will still be there. So it, some, it, it, it works to advantage. It gives people freedom to, to do their jobs um, you know, from wherever they're at. Well, I know that for our Citrix connections, we have – uh, volume licensing. Yeah. Um, just because we're able to, that way we're able to pay for what our Citrix servers can handle. Um, because as you know, Brian, our, uh, the Citrix servers are set to handle a set amount of traffic. So that way we know exactly how many, uh, licenses would be being used on that server at its highest peak. So, I'm not sure what we use uh, on site, but I'm sure it's the same thing. I think it's per machine. Mm -hmm. So. And there's also well, I think there was also a thing with this where it was, you know, are they aren't aren't a lot of those licenses dependent on you running a Windows server sometimes too? Yeah. And I can't think this thing's running on Windows Server if they're doing it in the cloud like this. Like this has got to be some kind of proprietary system. So maybe there's an issue there as well. So, all right, I want to touch on one story real quick. Uh, Chachi, I know you're on this this company. Uh, T-Mobile, the, uh, the, what was he, the VP over there? Uh, one of the big wigs over at T-Mobile. Uh, their CEO, Cole Broadman, uh, said that if he could change one thing in the mobile industry, he would get rid of device subsidies. Now, this is how we can pay $200 for a $600 iPhone, or most of the devices out there are three, four hundred, five hundred dollars that are like say Android smartphones, Windows phone, uh, you know, even your flip phones are usually like two hundred bucks um, at this point. So uh, and, and that's the reason a lot of our bills are so high, because these subsidies get absorbed into what we pay for our data, for our voice and everything like that. Uh, what do you guys think about this? Well, one, T Mobile's too small to do this. Because T Mobile starts pushing like a five hundred dollar, you know, Android phone versus everybody else they're going to get killed at this if t-mobile is going to charge me 500 dollars for a phone it's going to be an iphone yeah <laughs> it better at least be the iphone yeah. maybe that's how they can finally get it since they can't afford to do the subsidy i'll go somewhere else because i mean that's what it really sounds like is this is their kind of backlash to being the one left out of the iphone party at this point so and and, and they're probably feeling it and between that and what happened with uh, at&t you know, they're kind of just looking for something. Um, what do you think, Brian? Are you, do, do you think, well, you do, you like Chachi deal with a lot of these uh, uh, phone issues with, uh, you know, on a, on a broader scale with the companies. Do you, do you think this would help in any, any, did you see the positive from this? Uh, I think uh, so. mobile phones right now are just so complex and so dynamic. I think that, you know, especially you know, personal phones, even corporate phones, it's, it's tough. It's tough to say what, you know, what is or isn't going to help. It's, you know, somebody can change your mind, especially with data packages and all this other junk that, you know, has already been, you know, uh, discussed or, you know, in earlier uh, podcasts, it's just, it's tough. It's hard to know. And also looking at, I mean, the, you being able to get out of contract if you if you you, you can yeah. actually do this now you can just buy a phone outright and not have a contract it's expensive but yeah you know, other than that i mean um we actually we put out a question if anybody thought this would be you know any help to anybody um sherlock bones actually responded and says he has a plan like this now with t-mobile he ends up paying for the full cost of the phone but he's actually saving money in the long run i, I presume he gets a little bit cheaper plan or something or or, or somewhere along the line so uh, it was good to get that feedback there. Um, I don't know. I, at this point, everybody's in so much competition with each other. I think it would kill anybody that went for this. It, it would take like Verizon and at t both to do this. And you're going to see. Actually, when we talked to uh, Tim Kirby on Russia, 
Uh, and I think we, uh, there was some, somebody else I was hearing from that's overseas. Like, they don't have subsidies for their phones. It is $500, $600, whatever the equivalent is for an iPhone. So it is even more of a status symbol than what Chachi was saying about the iPad and Apple uh, computers here. Um, because, I mean, I mean, hell, we got 3GSs going out for free. Any, any teenager could get it at this point, you know. And whereas there, I guess, you know, we'd probably still be dropping $300 for a 3GS. So... I don't know. Yeah, I, I think it's it's really hard to tell. I mean, I, I think it's a valid point and, you know, offer it. You know what I mean? Just I mean, they do offer it today. Yeah. But they yeah. don't market it. But start advertising know. it. Say no start, contract. Start advertising, market it and see if it catches on. Uh, you know, I think in, you know, what will probably happen, people will keep their phones for longer. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, they'll wait to the, you know, like a car or any other uh, well, device. I'm going to. Wait until it stops letting me make phone calls. So. But, but Apple doesn't want you to do that. Exactly. That's that's exactly it. They don't care who pays for for it. They don't care that the phone companies are paying for it. They just they just care that they just made another record breaking qu- quarter in selling these guys. You know, uh, that's that that's what counts to them. And and it seems like it, it's kind of an industry that's kind of feeding itself and shooting itself in the foot there. And it's a mentality. You know, they've been they've been feeding us free phones for so long that uh, how are you going to tell America and you can't get your free phones anymore? It's a huge paradigm shift. I think if you look probably in everybody's Twitter feed every day, you probably see your at least once a week you see somebody says, oh, I'm almost out of contract. I can get a new phone. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the excitement of just getting to the point that, hey, I'm almost out of this contract. I can I can get a new phone. I mean, we're, it's just it's like, so it's like, hey, my car is almost paid off. Time to get a new one. <laughs> yeah. At that point. So, well, on that note, guys, let's get wrapped up here. Uh, we got some wrestling to talk about over on the Mayhem show. Uh, ben, thank you very much for thank joining you us. So Let me actually me. look at you there. Oh, that's Chachi. That's the wrong button. There <laughs> we go. I, I changed, it's yeah. getting late. Uh, thank you. Communityteach.com. That's right. Anything else you want to throw out there? Plug there. Your Twitter is anything like that? No, nah, Michael Sorg. I'll plug you. Nope. There no, you go. my Twitter is Ben S. Paul, <laughs> B-E-N-S-P-A-U-L, and you should tw- uh, you should follow me. It'll be good. There you go. Brian Snyder, he is at Dab of Tech. He is, uh, we, didn't, we didn't talk about it too much. Are you wary of Windows 8? You, tr- you tried Skyping us on Windows 8 earlier. Hey, it turns out it wasn't Windows 8, so I guess I have to apologize for that. Uh, it oh, seems like. hold on a second. Hold on a second. That means all oh. of my is not so wary of windows 8 there you go um <laughs> actually well, well you've been playing with that what do you think of it so far you know it's 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 not bad again it's one of those paradigm shifts that you know you have to get used to it mm-hmm. I, there are things i just don't like i like to be able to get into my computer like fast you know it's just like a login i go you gotta raise the uh, curtain you gotta oh. log in you gotta get out of metro and then you gotta get to the desktop and yeah, it's like oh yeah. where the heck is Cause, this cause I, I think you know because i'm sorry there no no whoops that's not it i, I know it guy is is getting rid of the desktop even if they've gotten past the command prompt at this point right i mean uh, yeah i mean it's all it's, there and it can all be configured i think for for the consumers uh, you know, obviously there's going to be some learning curves, but in an enterprise, there's going to be group policies to make it look like it does today. I mean, there will always be that, but yeah, it just, it's, it's going to be tough. I think it's going to generate a lot of, Hey, how do I do this? Where'd my start menu go? Okay. How do I even log in? <laughs> yeah, it takes a minute. It takes a minute. I, uh, you know, more and more I've been playing with it and it keeps telling me to tap things. And I'm like, I want to tap my screen because oh. apparently that's what you want me to do. And how many people have a touch screen at this point? So, but hey, those HP touches are going to fly like hotcakes now. All right. Uh, and also is uh, he is at insert coin to begin dot com. Chachi says dot net. I got nothing. He's got nothing. Uh, He's got nothing. He does uh, unsung the award winning unsung series. Nothing. No, oh, uh, not excited about that. We over that already. Got nothing. No, no. Go check. Go check it out. He gets it. He gets around town. This week over on PittsburghOnVideo.org. I'm Sorg. Uh, you can check out everything else going on at uh, Sorgatron.com, 
SorgatronMedia.com, all the fun stuff going on there, all the new DVD releases. Uh, you can hit us up, contact at AwesomeCast.com, or tweet us at AwesomeCast. We're also on the Facebooks. We're on the Google+. Plus. Go have a conversation with us. Tell us what you think about the stuff we talked about on this show. Tell us how wrong we are, please. Always up for a conversation. Thanks, everybody. We've had a great chat room hopping tonight. Uh, thank you for everybody in there. Riz, Hot Wheels, Sonic Screwdriver, uh, and everybody else. Who, uh, who is Sonic Screwdriver? He's a fantastic human being. That's my introduction. Okay. <laughs> thank you. You guys have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Awesome. Yeah, the